Joining me now is Sue Carswell, the former People magazine reporter to whom Trump gave the now infamous interview, currently a reporter, researcher for Vanity Fair. Did you release this tape? No. Did you have the tape? I mean, what, how did it get into play? All right, two people had the tape. I had a tape and Trump had a tape, and I don't have the tape. How do you think it got into play? Well, it didn't get to the Washington Post through me. So? Trump. You think Trump dropped this tape? Yeah. Why would he do that? Look what's gone on this week. Taxes, um, Paul Ryan, uh, the butler. The butler did it, and now Trump seems to like to pull People Magazine-type stories into the So, array. in other words, a continuation. Here's your thought. It's a continuation of what John Miller told you back in 1991, that there's no such thing as bad publicity. So Trump, now getting banged over the taxes, the butler comes out and says outrageous things about President Obama. He figures, you know what, a little diversion here is in order. Yeah, but what's so weird is that 25 years, and all of a sudden this comes forward. There's no reason for it to have come forward at all. There's not been some Watergate break-in at your apartment where someone could have This is Watergate going on right now, Michael. Well, you know, there are some who are watching, and, and I think everybody's transfixed by it, but some who say, come on, what's the relevance? Who cares? Who cares? I mean, he's running for president. It's all about the character of a president and, you know, whether he should be in the Oval Office being able to, you know, run this country and, and is he going to still be punking us when he's president? Let's go back to what happened. It's 1991. You're at People magazine. He's got some domestic discord. You call Trump's office. Yes. And what happens? I called his office and asked to speak with Trump about the tabloid headlines that he had dumped Marla for Carla uh, Bruni. And I got a call back from a spokesperson who claimed he was John Miller. And, who sounded, and I said, you sound just like Trump. It's remarkable that he was able to, you know, hire a publicist that sounded just like him. And he said, well, you know, I just come from places. He didn't, he wasn't very specific. And I had my list of questions, so I just went on with them. But, but then your I, antenna were immediately raised. Well, it was just like, this is uncanny. Right. So we went on, we talked, and then I, I made it go a little longer. And then I got off the phone, and I immediately walked down the halls, and I said, this is Trump, this is Trump. And then we had a call and get three confirmations, and we called Cindy Adams from the New York Post, who said, that's Trump, what's he doing? And then we called another person, and then I called Marla, who just cried when I played the tape for her. She was then the girlfriend and was hoping well, to be affianced. Well, she had a so-called engagement ring, she had thought. And he said, what about that? What is it that so upset her? What so upset her about? Marla. When you played the tape, why was she so upset to hear it? To hear that he was dating all, everybody in the world ex except for her. Including perhaps Madonna in combat boots. And, yes. I mean, it's and, got all the elements. Come on. And Kim Basinger. So when you write the story, to your credit, you say, you know, Trump says goodbye, Marla, hello, Carla, and a mysterious PR man who sounds just like Donald. So you, you, you outed him at the time. Yes. Did he then fess up? Two weeks later. He did. Yeah. He apologized to the magazine, and and, and he and said, "I'm sorry." I'm and he put said he had disturbed, you know, this had disturbed Marla greatly. And let me put on the screen what People magazine then published at the time: "Quote the John Miller fiasco. He called he Trump called a joke gone awry." So, explain to me why you think if he admitted it at the time, he's on the Today Show yesterday saying that wasn't me. It doesn't even sound like me. I mean, this is a guy who gets up at like four in the morning. I mean, he should have been more with it than you that. You think he was caught off guard? I think he was caught off guard. But I, I, then again, as I said, I don't. I didn't release the tape. I believe he did. Just to distract our attention from all the other things that have now been published yes. about him. Yes. Um, you know that some people. Whoa! Well, actually, there's another aspect of this story. So you write the follow-up, but you had an interaction with him before you wrote the follow-up. No, I had an inter interaction with him after the follow-up. I mean, it was Tell about a month about after it. the follow-up story. No, after, right after the follow-up story, I went out on the town with him and Marla and another editor from People, People Magazine. And we went to the hottest nightclub of that, at that time. I don't remember the name. And, you know, we w rode around the town in his stretch limousine. And we went into this club and... 
you know, we did a small talk in the limousine, and it was like, where are you from? Albany, oh, the best city, you know. The best. Everything's Huge. the best. Huge city. And um, where'd you go to school? University of Vermont. Great state, you know. Everything was just great. But was this an implicit apology? I mean, already yes. people, all, all, okay, already People Magazine had said that he'd apologized yes. for the, the This the, was, there was no reason for me to be going out with Trump and Marla. Uh, other than to make it up to you. Cause, right. Because he'd, he'd pranked you. He's not a guy who goes out. Right. I don't know if this is a guy thing. Did you make phony phone calls when you were a kid? Like, did you ever call the drugstore and say, do you have Prince Albert in a can? You better well, let him out or he'll suffocate? I used to call and say that the Russian spies were in the neighborhood. Creative. But then again, you probably weren't 44, a parent of three, and now running for president of the United States. Correct. Um, when a Trump spokesperson comes on next and says to me, you should be talking about Hillary's emails, my response should be what? You Why am I talking about this and not that? What do you mean in regards well, to... Well, is, is this overblown? The story now? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. I mean, it says a lot about Trump. What does it say about him? I think we should be concerned about his judgment and the fact that he could pull things like this in the future. I mean, who's to say that he won't pull another? Well, I don't think he's going to use John Miller or John Barron, but he could do this in the well, future. Well, one other thing I want to show you. He if could I, do this to Putin. If I, if I can show you, it's not, it's not just People Magazine that, I'll take your word, he was punking. Can we put up the New York Times? He used John Miller with you, but look at this. This is now a John Barron quote in the New York Times, April 6, 1980. The merit of these stones was not great enough to justify the effort to save them. This is him talking, I think, about Bonwit Teller. So it's not just you. It wasn't a one-off, is my right. point. He was apparently playing this game with, with all of the media, including the Washington Post and the New York Times, and was able to pull one over on them as well. Yeah, well... We're all in the same club. All right. Well, you're in good company, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Sue Carr is 